you with the love of Jesus. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, bless God's name today. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's something mighty sweet about the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Eyes haven't seen it. Ears haven't heard it. But it's something mighty sweet. Amen. About the Lord. Somebody say sweeter than honey. In the honey kind. Yes. Somebody say he's sweeter than sweet. Hallelujah. Ha, ah, stay moved. Somebody say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. He is a friend to the friendless, the motherless, to the motherless, the father, to the fatherless. Hallelujah. He'll pick you up when you're falling down. Amen.
carnal things or fleshly things. Right. God right. wants us to be in a spiritual place with him. Yes. To yes. know that if he needs a ram in the bush, that he can count on us. Hallelujah. And that we won't run away. <laughs> but we'll be there to do what God is calling for us to do. Yes. So many people would be so much more blessed if they just knew God. Amen. Just be so much more blessed if they just yes. knew God. Amen. And not running away from God. Hallelujah. But so many people are running from the Lord Amen. and not running to the Lord. Right. Well, in the book again of Genesis 32, verses 24 through 29. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw, he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was, became out of joint as Jacob continued to wrestle uh, with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, Jacob, I will not let thee go except Thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? He said, My name is Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men, and you have prevailed as a result of your strength and ability to hold on. Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, why do you ask my name and he blessed him there. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And just for a little while, I just want to talk to you today uh, from the topic, God will show up. Amen. Hallelujah. That's your name. Tell him God will, God will show up. Show up. Yes, he will. God will uh, show up. Amen. Those of you who know the story know that Abraham had a son by the name of Isaac. Isaac, hallelujah, had a son by the name of Jacob and Esau. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaac's son, before they were born, were wrestling in Rebecca's womb. They were fighting even from the womb. There was a struggle by these two sons, even in the womb. There was a wrestle. This was a wrestling family, amen? amen. There was a wrestle uh, by these two sons, even in the womb. Those of you who know the story um, know that when Rebecca had uh, Jacob and Esau, Esau was born first. But as Esau was being born, Jacob had a hold to Esau's heel so as to say, you might be uh, first, but I'm not too far behind. Right. 
I'm still on your heels. Whatever uh, blessing you get, uh, it's going to trickle down on me. I'm still behind you. Amen. Amen. I'm still with you in this. Hallelujah. And you can't get too far without me. Praise your name, Jesus. Yes. And so it was uh, that these two twins grew up. And uh, as they grew, your Bible and my Bible lets us know that uh, Esau was a uh, worker or a tiller of the field. He, he was an outdoorsman, let me say that. Uh, he was a rough guy. He, he believed in hunting and, and scouting out venison and meat and deer and game. And he was always on the outside being rough and getting rougher. Jacob, on the other hand, was a mama's boy. He didn't like the outdoors. Jacob liked being around mama. He liked being uh, in the kitchen and, and cooking. And he, he just liked being indoors. And so you can tell right then how um, their, their height, their, their skin texture was different just by uh, Esau loving the outdoors and Jacob loving the indoors. So it was that uh, Esau was out hunting one day, and uh, as he was out hunting, uh, Jacob came out uh, as well, and uh, Esau was so uh, connected with uh, hunting that he didn't even take time to eat. He was just, uh, I see a deer, or I see venison, or or uh, I, I see it, I see it, I see him, right? I, I, let me shoot at him, let me, let me kill him. And so he didn't take time to eat, and by, uh, before he knew it, he was so hungry uh, that he uh, would do anything to uh, get some food. Amen. And so Jacob just happened to be there at the right time. And uh, he said uh, more or less to Esau, his brother, I tell you what, if you are so hungry, I've got some, you know, some food over here. I've got you know, uh, uh, just a bowl of, of food here. If, if you're really hungry, if you would sell me for uh, this food, this bowl, plate of food, if you would just sell me your birthright, and I'll give you what I have prepared for myself. I was going to eat it. Uh, but if you are you're hungry like you say you are, I'll give you it if you just give me your birthright. And you know Esau said, well, uh, sounds like, and I paraphrase, a pretty good deal to me. What good is a birthright if I die before I inherit it? Amen. Amen. So it was that um, uh, Esau sold Jacob his birthright. And uh, Esau, you know, like some of the kids are, they'll give something away. And then in a few minutes, after they have ex made the exchange, their mind tells them, now go back and get what you had changed. Go back and get what you gave away. It still belongs to you. Esau forgot about the exchange. He forgot about, I've sold my birthright to Jacob for this bowl of porridge. Uh, you know, uh, let me go back and get it. And so uh, when uh, uh, Jacob, gets that birthright and, and sort of, um, you know, swindles his brother Esau out of his birthright. He runs on back home to mama and uh, lets mama know what's going on. And uh, mama said, well, listen, I tell you what, while your brother is, and I paraphrase, while your brother's still out hunting, while Esau is still out doing what Esau does, well, you go on in there, uh, your dad is about ready to die. That, that day came when dad was about ready to die. And uh, as you know, mom said, Rebecca says uh, to Jacob, go now. Don't waste time, but go now uh, because your dad is about ready to die. And, and when he, before he dies, he's going to pass the birthright, the firstborn birthright along. Go in there now and get that birthright. Now I'm wondering how come Rebecca being the mama is working with this little boy. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. 
uh, but to, uh, Rebecca understands some way, somehow, uh, this is going to work out all right. Hallelujah. And it was a good thing that she had faith in God. Amen. And so she worked along with Jacob to go and um, get some skin from an animal and put it over his body and go in and stand uh, before Isaac. And Isaac says, uh, son, you know, uh, he saw come here and here comes Jacob wrapped up in animal skin and stands uh, before Isaac and said, yes, dad. Uh -huh. Isaac said, I'm ready uh, to bless you now. And the, here is a little scrawny Jacob standing in front of his dad with the hair of an animal wrapped around him so that his father won't, uh, won't think that it is or know that it is actually Jacob. He stands before his father, and his father lays his hand uh, on Jacob's head and pronounces the firstborn blessing uh, upon Jacob. Yes. Right. Jacob runs out, and he's very, very happy and very, very glad that he's got the firstborn's blessing. And so it was, the story goes, that Esau comes along and understands that dad is ready to bless the firstborn. And Esau, remember now Esau, you sold your birthright. Uh -huh. and so you really don't have a right to stand here before your dad asking for a firstborn's blessing. But he comes anyway. When he comes to receive a blessing, I can imagine uh, that Isaac said now, uh, who is this? <laughs> Isaac said, it's your firstborn, dad. Bless me now. Hallelujah. And uh, Isaac said, well, I've already done that. Where were you when I laid my hand on your head and blessed you? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Esau said, it must have been my brother Jacob up to his trickery again. He is a, a son, of, of a brother of, of tricks. He's got a, all kinds of tricks in his bag. And now uh, he has gotten my birthright. And your Bible and my Bible lets me know that Esau was so mad, he swore to himself uh, that I am going to kill my brother Jacob. Yes. Rebecca got the news. The mother, Rebecca, got the news that uh, Isaac, Esau, is so mad that he is going to slay or kill his brother Jacob. Rebecca calls uh, Jacob alongside her and said, listen. Your brother is mad, uh, and he's mad enough to bite a bullet, I may paraphrase it. Yes. He's mad enough, hallelujah, to kill you. So what I want you to do, I've got an uncle, and I want you to go live, uh, I've got a brother, excuse me, and I want you to go live with my brother, your uncle Laban. And see, I can imagine that uh, it was uh, an urgency, because you don't know what your brother Esau is capable of. Right. Go and go right now. And so it was that uh, Jacob packed his grip and flee, took off, hallelujah, uh, before Esau could get to him. And so he ran on off uh, to his uncle Laban's house. And as he took flight on the way uh, to uh, his uncle's house, Jacob, uh, was always, you know, being that trickster, but I'm so glad that uh, God knows how to deal with tricksters. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you might be a trickster, uh, but you're going to reap what you sow. Hallelujah. And I might not, y'all might not believe all of the other scriptures in the Bible, uh, you might not know that all the other scriptures in the Bible are true. Uh, but this one scripture you can believe that uh, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man, and that means woman too, so it, that shall he or she also reap. You better believe that whatever you plant is coming up again. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's coming up again. Hallelujah. Whatever you put under the ground, it's coming up again. Whatever uh, you plant, whatever you uh, 
a sow, that's what you're going to reap. Anybody ever reaped anything and you said that's what you get? Amen. Amen. Look at them and you might laugh. You might see them hit somebody. And then after a while, they might, on their way running, trying to get away, they trip and fall and skin themselves up. And then you say, that's what you get. Amen. Why? Because you are going to reap what you sow. I know y'all might not believe it today, but whatever you plant, whatever you put out there, right. I want you to know that it's coming up again. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why you want to do good by people right. and not bad because you want to reap good. Yeah. Whatever you put out there, you want to get the good back. Amen? So you want to put good things out there. One thing about Jacob, he didn't realize that all of his trickery, all of his chicanery, man, it was coming up again. Hallelujah. Here he's tricked his brother, and now when he goes off to his uncle Laban's house, Laban, however you want to pronounce it, um, he sees a beautiful young lady by the name of Rachel. And when he sees Rachel, he falls in love uh, with his uncle Laban's daughter falls in love with Rachel. And he says within himself, I can imagine in my mind's eye, when he saw this 36, 24, 36, he imagined there was not another like her on the face of the earth. Amen. I can imagine he said in his mind, I got to have her. Right. So he said to his uncle Laban, I want Rachel. What do I need to do to get Rachel? They banned his uncle said, I tell you what you need to do. You need to work for me seven years. And after you work for me seven years, helping me uh, grow my cattle and prune my sheep, after you work all of these years, working hard labor out in the sun, working, helping me till my land and produce and helping me make this thing grow up, said, after you work seven long years, I will give you Rachel. Hallelujah. Right. And so it was that Jacob looked at Sister Rachel, and he said in himself, as beautiful and as gorgeous as she is, working seven years won't be nothing but a light thing. So it was, he worked seven years, and your Bible and my Bible lets me know that because Jacob loved Rachel so much, those seven years went by so fast, it just didn't seem like it was seven years. Because of the love he had uh, for Rachel. And so he worked those seven years, and here he comes up to his uncle Laban, and he says, Uncle, and I paraphrase. He says, I've worked for you uh, seven years, and I want my prize. Uh -huh. And so it was that uh, I can imagine that Uncle Laban put a wedding ceremony together, hallelujah, and uh, put, uh, gave him the, you know, his little bitty house or hut to go and uh, go on his honeymoon uh, with whom he thought was Rachel. And it, you know, they didn't have street lights then like we have now and didn't have porch lights and didn't have ceiling fan lights and didn't have uh, lamp lights. Amen. Amen. So when Jacob went into his house in the dark, in the corner, back in the bedroom, hallelujah, and he slept with whom he thought uh, was Rachel. Yeah. When he woke up the next morning and the sunlight hit. Everybody say sunlight. Sunlight. When the sunlight hit, he looked over uh, at his new bride and he didn't see Rachel, but he saw old cockeyed Leah. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when he saw Leah, his heart dropped in it. And I can imagine he was so upset. Uh, with his uncle Laban, he was ready to go and tell him and give him a piece of his mind. And he went to Uncle Laban and Uncle Laban said, listen, 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 calm down, calm down. I want you to understand that Rachel is still available. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Rachel is still free. She's not married yet. 
And uh, she loves you just like you love her. I tell you what, if you would work for me seven more years, just seven more years, I will this time give you Rachel. Yes. And do you know how the first seven years went by so fast? Because I can imagine in my mind's eye every time he worked a year, when he would look into his mind and see how beautiful Rachel was, that year just seemed like one minute to him. And I believe he felt like uh, he could eat those seven years without any problem. So he was, so it was that uh, Jacob said, if I, I work seven years before uh, for Rachel, I can work seven more years for Rachel again. Wow. Uh, he was working for Uncle Laban uh, to have Rachel. He was married to Leah. And while he was married to Leah, uh, he was having babies by Leah. Seven years went by and um, Rachel finally belonged to Jacob. Uh -huh. And uh, the problem came up that uh, Leah and Rachel uh, were sisters. And while Jacob was married to Leah, because uh, Rachel didn't like Leah to begin with, you understand how when people think that you are at a disadvantage, yeah. and people look at you like, I've got this and you, your little stuff don't mean very much, uh, you don't have what I have, and I'm all of this and you're a little bitty peon, Oh, something about God, how he loves to help the underdog. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter how much you have or how well you look or how much uh, you have amassed or how much you have gained in society or prestige or all that you think you might be. God still knows how to bless the underdog. So you might as well get on the bandwagon and stop thinking that you're all of that and a bag of Doritos, hallelujah, uh, because God knows how to bust in your bag and show you that you're really not what you think you are. God opened up Leah's womb and she uh, produced children. She spit them out left and right. And I say that because back then it was a blessing to have children. It, it was a blessing for the women. The women thought uh, that they were blessed if they were able to conceive a child and birth a child and bring a child into the world. And so it was that uh, Leah, because she was cross-eyed, uh, they talked about her. They thought that she wasn't too much to look upon. She wasn't uh, beautiful enough to gaze upon. And so she was talked about. You know, I can imagine when she was a child on the school ground, people would talk about her, laugh at her, and call her out of her name. Amen? And when uh, they saw Rachel, they, there Rachel was the one